Don't get caught in the flames of a nasty real estate closing. Did you know that in Florida, the consumer has the choice to pick your title company? So why not choose? And don't let someone else choose your fate. As a former firefighter and best-selling author, Kevin Thatcher of Independence Title will be your lifeline for your next real estate transaction. Kevin founded Independence Title in 2003 on the premise of going in the deal together and leaving the deal together, leaving no one behind. You have a choice, so choose wisely. Call Kevin today before it's too late. 754-200-3883 or visit TitleRate.com. That's 754-200-3883 or TitleRake.com. And now, welcome to the show. Welcome everyone to another real estate podcast. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO, that's right, Chief Everything Officer here at Independence Title. And we know, as we talked about before, referrals are key. I'm joined in the studio today by a great agent of ours, Monica, and Mary Ballard from Gold Star Mortgage, who we've done a ton of deals with over the last uh, almost two decades now. So thanks for joining us in the studio today. Thank, Thank you. you. Glad to be here after a closing. Absolutely. So we actually just got done filming a uh, recording a closing. We did a closing with the three of us together, and we wanted to kind of talk about the teamwork and what it takes to really get a deal done in today's market. Um, so, you know, th this deal had a lot of hair on it. It was referral. It was referred to Monica. Uh, they took it from a different lender that wasn't able to close it. Uh, and we were able to get this deal successfully closed uh, in just about 30 days. And like I said, we just finished a closing. So let's start from the beginning, Monica. I know you said it, the client was a referral of yours. It, I sold a house to their friends. Um, unfortunately, they didn't think of me at first, but when uh, things were tough with their uh, other agent. Uh, the the friend said, you got to go with my agent and they referred me. Um, like Mary said, they came in with another lender and when I explained the whole situation about the Ballard team, they were on and they we joined forces with, with Mary and Brad and they took over the whole lender and let me and uh, kind of uh, they joined forces with me in order to go and get that uh, contract there were multiple offers we're talking three hundred thousand dollar home so remember this very is aggressive. very very random that you can find those it's as it's a, they are a young family a baby four months old um that made us you know more <laughs> energetic but at the end of the day it's a 300 dollars transaction that everybody in town wants it they have 15 offers and they picked us because we were a team because they saw the ballers could close them and that's what the listing agent transferred to the seller said let's go with this couple let's go with monica let's go with the baller team they can close it and we did Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, when we talk about doing these closings, especially now in a challenging market, you know, we know there's multiple offers. So it's like that, that first time home buyer, the one with limited down payment, they're just not, they're not beating out these cash offers, people coming in from out of the country, out of the state uh, with a lot of money. So, uh, you know, this is a testament to the work of, of working as a team, right, Mary, mm -hmm. Get, getting it done as a team. You know, again, we do a lot of closings and, and the idea is that when we know we're working together, we know if there's a challenge, we pick up the phone and we get it done, which we've talked about in other videos that we've done. You know, if Monica as the agent is having a little hiccup in the deal, she knows she can pick up the phone and call us, not have to worry that, uh, you know, many years ago when I was in the business, I, I wound up doing everything myself because I'm like, I'm getting blamed anyway. Mm -hmm. So now you know you have the right team so you don't have to worry about you know being so involved in the mortgage because you know Mary and Brad are handling it. You don't have to call and be on top of the title company because you know the team you're choosing is going to get you across the finish line. So Mary, let's talk for a minute and let everyone kind of understand the type of deal it was and, and why someone else couldn't close it because we know all lenders are not created equal. Although most of you have the same program, yep. they just don't know how to get it done properly. Exactly. So again, thank you, Monica Quintana with Charles Rutenberg Realty for giving us the referral. So um, the buyers came to us via text. We sent them the app. So she was having problems getting approved because she has a little bit of gap because she had a baby. Well, we'll just let these jets because we're in Fort Lauderdale fly over real quick. 
Yeah, the Air and Sea show is this weekend, so if you heard we paused for a second, there was a fighter jet flying right over our office. Yeah. So a lot of people would say, and a, lot, a few other lenders had told her, well, you don't have a complete two-year work history. You have a gap because you moved from New York to Florida, um, and we're, we're not going to be able to help you until you have more time on your new job. So technically, the FHA rule is if you're if you're off work for six months, then you got to be back on the new job for three months. Well, you got to know your FHA rules. She had a baby. It's allowable. It's allowable. Um, uh, change time to be off. And not only that, I built the two-year work history prior. So that's just being in the business, knowing the true FHA guidelines and how to put together a loan. But the main thing that changed the loan was adding Broward County Housing Authority's MCC Mortgage Credit Certificate. So that mortgage credit certificate, it's a tax deduction they take at the end of the year, but what it does is it gives me an extra 166 in qualifying income. So instead of making 4,000 a month, they made 4166 a month. Game changer able to close the deal, could not have closed the deal without it. Now the buyers had to do a special program, they had to do counseling, do a, some extra paperwork, but they did it and that's how they're homeowners today with their beautiful little baby. And I may add that they weren't left behind. Um, we did work with them closely, but mostly uh, Mary and Brad um, as lenders, they could have let them say, you know, go and do the class. Uh, they, they, they guide them how to do it, where to go, and, and follow up. That is important because sometimes you let them do stuff and they don't do it. And at the end, the result is tragic for everybody, closing and disputing escrows, and that didn't happen just because we worked it throughout until today that we're getting checks. Yeah, I mean, I think for, for people listening, they need to just understand, you know, obviously we're producing it, the three of us doing these deals together, but anyone that's listening to this needs to really understand the value of working with someone who knows what they're doing. You know, I remember a couple of weeks ago, they posted about the new FHA guidelines about a 40-year uh, mortgage, and all these agents are going crazy saying, oh, we can do 40-year mortgages, 40-year mortgages, and it's like, mm -hmm. if you didn't talk to the right mortgage worker, and Mary's sitting here shaking her head, mm -hmm. no, because that's the next part of my thing, is that it wasn't a 40-year mortgage. It was only for mortgage modifications mm -hmm. they're offering a 40-year program. So all of these agents were going crazy thinking now they can mm -hmm. pre-qualify their borrowers at a much lower payment because right. the term was going to go from 30 years to 40 years. Yeah. And it's only because the mortgage worker didn't know what they were talking about. Some mortgage worker posted something and Everything. they just weren't totally clear up on the guidelines. So right. this is where it's super important because for these agents, you're working with these buyers and sometimes agents are closing one, two, maybe if you're lucky, three deals a month. Like you're making your living off of this. So all of a sudden one deal falls apart, another deal falls apart. And you're in trouble. And now you're in trouble. You can't pay your rent and mortgage. Well, so. that's part of, uh, not to interrupt you, but part of the team, you know, so from the beginning, we had to contact the listing agent, guarantee that we could close, guarantee that we could get a commitment, certain amount of days. Again, using independence, using Monica, knowing that we can all work together to get the appraisal done as quick, quick as possible, get the title back as quick, quick as possible. Yesterday, I was having to work with Kevin's um, title coordinator to make sure my MCC original documents were signed by the seller to make sure they would be here for me today to pick up at the closing with Independence and Monica at the closing. So all these things just played into it. Um, during the process, the appraisal did come back light. Again, experienced realtor like Monica Quintana coming in and helping me do a rebuttal. We did a reconsideration. We did a reconsideration, which it came it, it makes a difference because we were otherwise we would have had no there was a credit in the transaction and uh, that was necessary for the transaction if we were to be very low in the price for the initial appraisal we would have lost that credit and we kept it yeah. awesome so i'm trying to provide value to the consumer right because obviously there's agents that listen to this and other mortgage brokers but the reality is we want to provide to the consumer like what do you need to look for forget about this deal aside but you know what would you say monica are the top three qualities someone should look for in an agent i definitely think that um experience doesn't really mean the years of you being on the field it's you gotta ask the questions of uh uh of the difficulty of your transaction because if you were a uh, 800 credit score and you have all the income in the world and, uh, and and the whole picture was perfect then they really don't need much but um like kevin said at the beginning it's the challenge is the pricing is they're not getting so uh 
the buyers need to ask uh, the question to the agents and who they work with as, uh, or what they think about the loans and how we can put together the difficulties uh, into making it happen. Uh, I don't know exactly what I could tell you of what will be the questions for them, but they really need to know that that agent is backing them up. Maybe checking their reviews uh, of the agents and maybe you know checking really with that referral that gave them like why this person is really qualified to work with you. Um, and we teach a lot of social media classes because we're big on social media and we always use Monica as like the poster child for social media because you look her up on every site and she just has real reviews like most agents don't have any reviews or if they do they have on one or two sites like you've really worked hard on building it i mean obviously i'm a testament to your clients they're constantly in here closing deals and and we just actually work on a deal which which goes to your credibility you know you had a deal that that you couldn't just do a regular deal so we talked about doing a potential novation deal correct right and that was the one you came to me we strategized how to do it uh, and then all of a sudden, you, your experience figured out that that wouldn't be the best option, although it would have probably been the best option maybe for you, but it wasn't the best option for the client and you switched it over to a different type of deal and got it closed. So that kind of goes to uh, your experience of understanding the, the business. So if, if a buyer and seller are listening to this, like you want to make sure you're, you're vetting your agent. It's not just an agent that has a pretty profile online and works for a big name company. It's someone who has actually closed deals, someone that is actually doing business uh, and hasn't just been licensed for many years, but actually closing deals. And in the market where you want to buy, I think too, market, M Monica knows this area, you know, Fort Lauderdale, Broward County. She knows the area. She's very familiar with a certain pockets and she's really good at working with young families and first time home buyers and, and you know, um, knowing what they want and everything. So I think that's a good question too for the realtors is where do you normally work? What's your normal, do you, do you normally target condos? Do you normally target single families? Like what is your target market? Like where do you normally work? Where are the bulk of your closings? I think that's a good question for a realtor. Because if a realtor specializes in, in Miami, they're not gonna know a lot about Margate and Tamarack. Right. And I think another okay. one is also like, how are your negotiation skills? I think is a big one because nowadays- Do you write nowadays, your own contracts? <laughs> yeah, do you write your contracts? What are your negotiation skills? Do you understand your contract? You know, we know in Florida, everything's fill in the blank. So the reality is a realtor doesn't need to know much. They just need to know how to put a couple of names and signatures oh, right, on Karen. a good contract. Uh, yeah, I could attest to that. Lately, uh, it has been a little, a lot more work on my end. Uh, to expose what I what I do in order to get the contracts done and I explain that because you know most Likely we do so much without explaining to the client or the client or the buyer or the seller don't know doesn't know how much Work is behind it. So now I do expose that I, I, I tell the client what I'm going to do for them especially these buyers and that is the main reason why I, I put together the team and, and it's not just selling myself but because I alone cannot do it that's why I need the team with a lender I need the team with a title company and I need to tell them I need all this team together so with our credibility we can tell them pick our offer and that's what just happened and hopefully will continue happening Awesome. So let's flip the, the coin as we're going to wrap up the show over to you, Mary. So so again, buyer, seller, they're listening to this. What makes working with Gold Star? Obviously, you know, you've been doing this 20 years, but what truly sets you apart from others or, or what questions can the consumers ask, whether they're using you or someone else in order to qualify their, their mortgage consultant that they're the best choice? I think now is, uh, especially here in South Florida with all the insurances going on and roofs having to be replaced and condos and inspections. I think now is the absolute most important time to be using a local lender. I'm sorry, but the larger banks are not, Fannie Mae is doing changes to their guidelines and their structuring. Now is the time that you need to be having a local lender that's running your findings through the system, that's looking at your property, that's looking at the listing comments, that's asking the listing agent or the buyer's agent, when was the roof replaced so that you're giving proper insurance quotes, proper, proper expectations and payment. If you're getting an out-of-state quote for insurance at 200 a month, 2400 a year on a single family home, yeah, that's not in the ballpark. It's true. So oh, we, true. we as the lender, I try to analyze all that up front, get that complete application, not just giving your paycheck on W-2 and you're approved. Complete application, complete history for two years. 
exactly what you're looking for in a payment in a house, what are you accustomed to being paid for, paying for in a um, housing payment, and making sure that everybody has proper expectations along the way. The experience from that and knowing guidelines and history, the experience and um, our speed, you know, get, being able to get buyers approved in 24 hours in underwriting, um, and then, you know, using, utilizing our own AMC, local appraisers, only local appraisers going to our properties, and then having the capability of, let's say there is a, uh, something missed on appraisal, having that ability to rebut that appraisal. A lot of lo lo local lenders don't have to do that. Taking the buyers, getting them, submitting them to underwriting, and then locking in their rate during these volatile times while they're not in a contract. So we can do that too. We were about to submit these buyers to underwriting, but Monica's so good, she got them under contract. And the same weekend we were gonna submit them to FastPass. So using your local lender, because your local lender is running everything through the system and knowing really what's going on in that community. Your realtor needs to know what's going on and so does your lender. Now, there's nothing worse than a couple goes and looks for a house with their children. They, they, they fall in love with it, they get it under contract. And then all of a sudden that pre-approval winds up falling through because they didn't realize, you know, maybe they were 50% W-2 or 75% W-2 and 25% commission. And, you know, there was changes in income or maybe they didn't file a tax return in time and, and the mortgage company truly didn't vet them properly to know that they were really qualified. So, you know, again, I think that's one of the most important things. So, you know, you want to make sure you're dealing with a, as we wrap up, a, an agent that is experienced. They have reviews online. They're good with negotiations. They understand the ins and outs of the contract. So they know how to put together a, a solid offer. From the mortgage side, you want to obviously make sure you're dealing with a local lender, someone who's been doing this for, for time and time again, and someone who understands the local market, but more importantly, understands the guidelines uh, of the types of loans they're doing. And make sure you're asking your lender, uh, are you doing a pre-approval or are you doing a full underwriting approval? Because if you're getting a full underwriting approval, you know when that offer is going into the seller, you can write a solid offer knowing you're, you're pretty much approved pending an appraisal. So that approval can go much quicker. And again, we've talked on uh, other uh, videos and stuff that we can close deals in you know seven business days, you're mm -hmm. getting deals mm -hmm. done now. So it is possible to get these deals done in 30 days or less where six or eight months ago, it wasn't possible. It was still that 45, 60 day waiting period. Things are falling through uh, at the last minute. And now we're doing this stuff so quick that the market is truly back. So I'm gonna put uh, Monica and Mary's information in the description here. If you're listening to this, reach out to them. Get to know them, get to know your local lender, get to know your local real estate agent, and, and just ask questions, right? What makes you a good agent? What sets you apart from your competition? And what can we do to work together? So uh, as always, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate both of you. Thank uh, it you. Was, it was a successful day at Independence Title. We had the trifecta. The three of us closed the deal together uh, on the mortgage real estate and title side, and the clients uh, were very, very happy. They're going to move into their new home. So thanks for joining us, those listening. We appreciate you. Follow us on social media. Share this podcast across all of the uh, podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Uh, we look forward to uh, getting on another episode here soon. As always, my name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. And we look forward to seeing you at the closing table. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Yay. Bye.